Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest pie recipe. And in this very special recipe, I'll show you how to make four of these mouth-watering five-inch individual steak and peppercorn sauce pies. And these outstanding pies are on another level of deliciousness. And they're very simple to make. And to make things even better, I'll be using my hot water crust pastry method. And once you make these for the first time, I'm pretty sure these will go into your Family Keeper recipe book. Maybe even your secret recipe book. <laughs> We've all got one. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. I'd also like to thank my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thanks supporters for their very kind help in producing these tutorial videos. I'll be giving you all a name splash and shout out a little later in the video. Okay, let's get on with today's recipe. I'll start the recipe by making a delicious steak pie filling. In a medium sized saucepan, heat up half of the oil from the ingredients list. I'm using vegetable oil, but any cooking oil will do. Now add the onions and cook them until they're soft. OK, I'll let those finish on the back burner for now. In a wok or frying pan, heat up the other half of the oil. Once hot, add your diced stewing beef. I'm using chuck steak, but skirt is a very good stewing beef too. Once the meat's in the pan, make sure each piece is separated. Don't have them sticking together. Toss and stir the meat continuously. Evaporate any water that leaches out of the meat too. You normally get this with cheap supermarket meats. In real time, this should take around five minutes to do. Once the beef has some colour, transfer it to the now softened onions in the saucepan. Now give those a good mix together. Right, add your beef stock to the pan. If you have any, natural beef stock is best. But if you don't, and most households won't, you can use a couple of beef stock cubes and that's all I'm using. Time to add a couple of bay leaves. Now salt to taste, but be careful how much salt you add, especially if you're using stock cubes. There's no need to use black pepper, as we'll be adding some peppercorn sauce later. And that's it for the pie filling for now. Now bring that to a low, slow simmer, get the lid on and cook for at least one hour. Once the filling's done and the meat is fall apart tender, and as you can see mine is, you can remove the bay leaves. They've done their job. Next thing is to thicken the filling. There's lots of ways you can do this, but I like to use corn flour or you may know that as corn starch, mixed with a little cold water. Simply add it to the filling and stir it in. It'll instantly start to thicken up. Right, that's done. Turn off the heat and let it completely cool before using it. I like to make mine the day before and let it sit in the fridge overnight. But if you want to cool it down quicker, just float the pan in a sink of cold water and it'll be cool enough to use after about 30 minutes. OK, on to making the hot water crust pastry. And this pastry has got to be the easiest and tastiest pastry you'll ever make. Start by putting your water in a small saucepan and onto a low heat. Firstly, add the lard to the pan. Now lard is a pork product, so if you don't like or use pork ingredients, use a solid vegetable fat instead. Or you can get away with just using all butter. Next, you can add the butter to the pan. Now let that slowly heat up until all the fats have melted. And while that's heating up, get your flour into a large bowl and add the salt. Now mix those together and form a well in the middle. Mm -hmm. 
Soon as the pots have melted, add the hot liquid to the flour in the bowl. And using my trusty wooden spoon handle, I'll bring it all together. Once you have it roughly mixed, turn it out onto the bench and start to bring it together with your hands. It should be cool enough by now, but always check first. There should be enough pastry in this recipe to make four 5 inch individual pies. Form the dough into a rectangle and split it into three pieces. Wrap each piece in cling film as shown. Dividing and flattening the pastry out like this just helps it cool a lot quicker in the fridge. And before you say, I am using biodegradable cling film. Now get it into the fridge for at least one hour before using it. I'll quickly go through making the peppercorn sauce, but I will be making a separate in-depth video on making this outstanding sauce very soon. Start by melting the butter on a low heat. Add the garlic and shallots and mix together with the butter. Once mixed, add the rough ground black peppercorns. The pestle and mortar is the best way to do this. Cook these for 10 minutes on a very low heat, stirring continuously. Turn up the heat to medium and add the red wine or masala. Once bubbling, reduce the liquid by half. Keep stirring, don't allow it to burn. Once it's reduced, you can add your mustard and stir it in. Now you can add your beef stock. I'm using one beef stock cube, that's why I'm not adding any salt. But natural stock is better if you have it. Now you can reduce that by half too. Once again, keep stirring. You can now add the cream and mix it in. Now cook the sauce for a further minute. You should now have a rich and creamy thick sauce. Now pour the sauce into a container and allow it to cool. And that's it, your gorgeous peppercorn sauce is done. You can use the pocket sauce if you wish, but you'll never ever beat the real stuff. For these pies I'll be using our 12.5 cm or 5 inch individual pie tins. And if you want to follow this recipe exactly, these pie tins are now available on our website if you're interested. Now I'm greasing mine with a little lard, butter or a solid vegetable fat will do the same job too. For rolling the pastry out, I'll be using our adjustable stainless steel rolling pin. Now these are also available on the website. These amazing rolling pins take all of the guesswork out of rolling your pastry out to the correct thickness. And for this one, I'll be using the 3mm or 1 8 spacer. On to rolling out the pastry. Now if your pastry has been in the fridge for more than 2 hours, take it out 30 minutes before you intend to use it. Just manipulate the pastry a little and the heat of your hands will soften it up, making it easier to work. For demonstration purposes, I'll make one large disc for the base of one of the pies and one for the lid of the pie. I'll do the rest off camera. Dust the bench with a little flour. Add a little to the pastry too. Right, I'll start rolling it out until I reach the required length, width and thickness. So, keep rolling to the required size. To prevent things sticking, continue dusting the bench and the pastry with flour as and when required. I'll be using these large pastry cutters to cut mine, but you can find something of a similar size to cut yours out. The pie basis for my tins needs to be approximately 17 centimetres or 6.5 inches. Right, that's the base pastry for mine cut. Now I'll cut the lid for the pie. And for the lids of the pies, they need to be around 14 centimetres, that's about 5.5 inches. I'll leave a link in the description box below the video to where you can get hold of these really handy large pastry cutters. You'll also need to re-roll all of your pastry trimmings by the way. There is enough pastry in this recipe to make all four 5 inch individual pies. And there you go, four bases and four lids, all ready to go. 
Before going any further, preheat your oven to 160 Celsius, that's 320 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 3. Time to put these beautiful pies together. First job is to make the egg wash. Crack a large egg into a container, add a dash of milk and whisk vigorously until it runs off the whisk as a loose liquid. As I normally do with my pie recipes, I'll fully assemble one pie from start to finish and do the other three off camera. Start by adding a base pastry to the greased pie tin. Gently work the pastry down into the tin. Flatten the excess pastry onto the lip of the tin. And for those girls and guys with long fashionable nails, take a spare piece of pastry and push it right down into the corners of the tin where the side meets the base. It's important to get it right down into that corner. Grab a fork and prick a few holes into the base as shown. Try to follow my evenly spaced pattern. This is called docking the pastry. It just helps stop the pastry base from bubbling up in the oven. Okay, and here's the filling after it's completely cooled. As you can see, it thickens even more when it's cold. Okay, start to spoon the filling into the base. Only add enough to fill three quarters of the pie case. Shape the top of the filling like a saucer, up at the sides and a bit lower in the middle. Now grab your container with that wonderful peppercorn sauce in and spoon a little into the pie. Not too much though, as this is quite rich and too much will overpower the meat. Plus it does expand some when baking and you don't want it bursting out in the oven. Once your filling's in, get your egg wash and brush it all around the lip of the pastry. Try not to get any wash between the pastry and the tin as this will stick like glue in the oven. And for belt and braces, brush a little around the edge of the pastry lid. Now line up the lid and gently press it down all around the lip of the tin. Using your fingers and thumbs, crimp all around the edge of the pie. This just takes a little practice, you shall get the hang of this. Right, using the back of a knife blade, cut away the excess pastry. Once that's done, crimp all around the edge of the pie again. This tidies up the pie, but more importantly ensures a good seal when baking. Almost there. For this pie, as the peppercorn sauce is quite loose, only cut one vent slit in the middle of the pastry lid. Now brush egg wash all over the lid of the pie, once again being careful not to get any between the pastry and the tin. And there you go, one beautiful looking pie all done and ready to bake. And here's all four completed and ready to go into the oven. FYI, you can freeze at this stage for future use. Simply defrost in your fridge for 24 hours and then bake as normal. Right, into the oven and set your timer for 45 minutes. And while those are baking, I hope you don't mind if I give my four recipe books a quick shout out. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. And also, book four in this series is totally dedicated to bread recipes. Also, the skeleton style oven gloves, now supporting our company name, are also available too. Just check out the link in the description box to our website store if you're interested in any of these items. Right, time's up on the pies. And if yours are still a little light in colour, just give them a few more minutes. But mine are done and looking fantastic. And the aroma of that peppercorn sauce is definitely coming through. Absolutely wonderful. Now these are way too hot to do anything with at the moment. So I let them sit still in the tins on a wire rack for about 10 minutes or so. I absolutely can't wait to give these steak and peppercorn sauce pies a taste. Okay, it's only been about seven minutes and I can't wait any longer. They pop out the tins very easily and as you can see the bottom and sides are well cooked and still extremely hot. Time to cut one open. <laughs> I 
And doesn't that look absolutely mouth-watering? Right, I'll clean it up a bit and I'll have to grab a couple of shots for the video thumbnail. Right, eventually time for a taste. And here I go for a big bite. And I hope you can see the little bit of peppercorn sauce I put on the top of the pie has permeated through mixing with the gravy from the pie filling. And oh yes, they taste just as good as they look. Really, and I mean really delicious. Like I said earlier, these pies are definitely on another level. They do have an outstanding flavour. I know this one's been a little longer than my normal videos, but I hope you agree, well worth it. A huge thumbs up for this outstanding pie recipe, guys. You've got to try this one. And as promised at the beginning of the video, here is the latest list of my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thank You button supporters. And they are Eileen McAvoy, Paul Dancy, Lorena Jimison, Father Pee Wee Stairmaster, Steve Busby, Bri Bri Dada Gay, Margaret Cook, Jeff McDermott, Artemis Silverbow, James K3250, Wild Will Weaver, Ian1785, Cozy Coops, Pucker Guru Kiss, Suzanne Nadun 4978 and Roger Tulk 8607. And there's also one who wishes to remain anonymous. Thanks very much guys. I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.